My name is Nick Rotundo. I'm the New England, New England sales manager, and I handle the sales of rental and bridging shoring projects in, in the six New England states. I'd like to thank Coffee in cooperation with the SSSBA for inviting me to speak on modular solutions for temporary forest roads. I'm pleased to be presenting alongside Catherine Van Heck from the Forestry Service. And once again, thank you, Dr. Baker, for the introduction. Okay, we don't see your screen yet, Nick. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. My bad. It was hidden behind my other screen. My okay. apologies. Go ahead. You see the full, you see the full. See the full thing? It looks great. Beautiful okay. picture. So I'll briefly begin by giving an overview of the, of the talk. We'll speak about ACRO, about our ACRO 700 access bridging systems, the installation method for this bridge, and then the specific applications with respect to the forest uh, industry. Uh, we'll follow up with a discussion on our beam bridges and, and time for questions. So let's talk about ACRO. We were established in 1951 and we're a world leader in the design, engineering, and manufacturing of prefabricated modular steel bridges. Our corporate headquarters is in Parsippany, New Jersey, but we have offices in Canada, Italy, the UK, and, and across the US. In the United States, we're set up to quickly respond to emergency and bridging needs with staging yards in Lafayette, New Jersey, Eden, North Carolina, and Centralia, Washington. Our US market is served by our manufacturing facilities. We have manufacturing located in Milton, Pennsylvania. And internationally, we have offices, uh, production capabilities in Lydney, which is in Gloucestershire in the UK. For the US market, we are by America with American Steel and our manufacturing is held to the highest quality. We're ISO 9001 certified. We're an AISC certified fabricator, members of the Short Span, Span Steel Bridge Alliance, part of the National Steel Bridge Alliance. And of course, as I said, made in America. And now that you know a little more about our company, I'd like to dive deeper into our bridging solutions. Our US manufactured bridges are made with high strength American steel. The bridge components are hot dip galvanized and that eliminates the corrosion and minimizes maintenance. One of the most important features of our bridging systems is that it's modular. So what does that mean? This means that our prefabricated precision engineered parts can be shipped directly to the job site and assembled. These parts are built to meet the span, the width, the strength requirements of the job, and there's no field cutting or welding required. And because the bridge is built at the location, the components of our bridges can be easily delivered to very remote areas, applicable to our audience, of course. Uh, we also provide an experienced technical advisor during the bridge installation, and this ensures a smooth and correct assembly of the bridge. So now that you understand a little bit about the Acro Bridge products, I'd like to discuss what we do. Our focus on the design, engineering, and manufacturing of pre prefabricated steel bridges allows us to participate in markets that you see here. Among those are the permanent bridge applications. Our hot dip galvanized bridges are built to last. Our temporary and emergency bridges cut down on potential long detours, potential job site safety issues, and are in stock and ready for delivery. ACRO also manufactures wet and dry cap bridging for the military, and we participate in international development programs. Some specific examples of these are shown here. Our pedestrian bridges span up to 200 plus feet. They come in widths of three feet to 12 feet. Our detour rental projects, as I mentioned, um, allow for separation of construction access and vehicular traffic. We produce bridges in the extractive and heavy haul industries, pipe and utility bridge supports, railroad bridges, and we also manufacture movable bridges, both lift bridge and bascule bridges. And we have a high capacity shoring product line. 
So I'd like to speak about the key challenges faced by the forestry industry. And this isn't all inclusive, but I think some of the major challenges are access. How can I navigate in a challenging topography? I have limited infrastructure, narrow roads, switchbacks, wetlands, all making the location difficult to access. With macro modular design, the components are easily shipped to the site and assembled in place. Another challenge is equipment and installation. How difficult is it to install these bridges and what equipment is needed on site? Macro's components are precision engineered and are quickly and easily assembled. And once again, there's no field cutting or welding required. Uh, capacity could be an issue. How can I be sure the bridge will withstand the loadings I require? You know, this is, of course, project specific. But our bridges can be designed from a load such as HS20 all the way to HS25, HL93, or to handle heavy haul applications. The cost effectiveness. How affordable are these systems? You know, often a bridge is only needed on a short term basis when providing access, maybe while thinning timber stands. But we allow the customer to choose between purchasing and renting the bridge. And because of our nationwide inventory, servicing these rental jobs is often very cost effective. I think the last challenge is compliance. Perhaps the most important, am I impacting on wetlands? Will I need permits like the USACE 404 or will I simply need to maintain the natural stream beds for my crossing? All these play a factor, of course, when making a decision. But due to, due to the span capabilities of ACRO, we can build the bridge um, to negate lengthy permitting processes and avoid preparing in zone impacts. So once we've identified the challenges and, and what's needed, the owner needs to specify the span roadway width, the loading required. As I said, it can be designed to ASD, LRFD standards, or heavy haul applications. We would need to know the bridge deck. Is this plain steel to accept an asphalt overlay, or a steel deck with a shop applied anti skid coating? Or are you going to put timber decks down with locally sourced materials? And guardrails, do you need TL1 through TL4? <clears throat> when we know this information, we can provide an engineered estimate or a quotation uh, for our different bridge solutions. Among those are the Acro 700 access. This bridge is, is really made up of three major components. Among those are the truss panels. These truss panels are 10 feet in length and are just under eight feet tall. They can be stacked three on each side or four on each side or one unit on each side. The transoms come in lanes, lengths that are determined by the curb to curb width of the bridge. They span from 12 feet curb to curb width all the way up to 36 or even 42 feet. And the last component of the bridge are our decks. The decks are 10 feet long and six feet wide. You can either use curb decks on the edges of the bridge or six foot wide in the center. These decks are available in plain steel to accept that contractor installed asphalt overlay or with an epoxy shipped from the, from the manufacturing facility. Here's an example of a truss configuration of a double single, double meaning two panels on each side, single meaning one story tall. So how are these bridges installed? There's three main methods. We have cantilever launch, crane assisted launch, and crane lift in. The cantilever launch is ideal. It does not require large cranes. It's great when access to the opposite side of the gap is difficult to access. The bridge is built and a nose is put on the front. Typically the nose is 60% of the length of the bridge. The bridge is pushed from the back with a bulldozer or other piece of equipment until it makes uh, fall on the opposite side. The crane assisted launch is built in place on one side the bridge is pushed out about 50% of the way into the gap, at which point a crane attaches to the nose of the bridge and it walks the or supports the load as the, as the bridge is pushed forward until it sits down on the buttons on the, on the opposite side. And the last uh, installation method is crane lifting. The bridge is built in its entirety and lifted in 
and put in place in the abutments. So we've discussed the components of the 700 system, the installation methods of the bridge, and now I'd like to showcase some vehicular projects in North America. As I mentioned, acro bridges range in curb to curb widths from 12 feet to 36 feet and up to 42 feet. Our clear spans can go up to 250 feet. This is a private utility job in Massachusetts. The challenge to the owner was related to compliance. There was a need to span a wetland area, as you see in the picture, and avoid the riparian zones. Another issue on the job site was access. This job was located on a small mountain, and it was elevated at about 2,000 feet with steep inclines and small, narrow roads. The last challenge was capacity related. This bridge had to handle construction access vehicles and related equipment. The solution was an acro, three acro bridges, 100 foot, 60 foot, and 40 foot span, all 15 foot, seven inches wide. The components were shipped to staging yards and then delivered to the location where they were built in place. The next job is a utility project in Fresno, California. The challenge to the owner here was access and capacity related. The need to cross an existing timber structure that you see in order to build a large wind farm on the adjacent side of the land, unfortunately, the timber deck wouldn't support any of those loadings. Additionally, the removal of this timber deck to replace it would have caused an environmental issue in itself. So the engineer decided an acro bridge spanning 100 feet by 24 feet wide in an overbridge application was a great solution. <clears throat> this bridge was designed to carry the load of the equipment and large transformers, and it was cost effective. Here's a job in Santa Cruz, California. The culvert failure during a historic flood caused the need for this bridge. Access uh, was an issue. The flatbed couldn't make these narrow roads and switchbacks. So the engineer decided an acro 90 foot long, 18 foot wide bridge designed for HL93 loading would be a great solution. The job was shipped into a staging yard and delivered in small trucks to the site. The crane was launched and put into place. This job in the Seattle River in Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest is in Washington State. The bridge was washed out, which created a need for access for forestry work on the opposite side of the bridge. The challenge here is this was an incredibly remote location. The solution was to provide a 310 foot by 13 foot, seven foot acro bridge in two spans of 210 and 100 feet. It utilized the steel ramps that you saw and see in this picture. They were able to utilize the existing bridge that had been partially washed out. The contractor flew in temporary abutments to the opposite side. They used a cantilever launch to touch down in the temporary abutments and continued their work. I show this picture, although not forestry related, just to show the diverse applications of our temporary bridges. Here you see a railroad bridge in the background that is 80 foot in length to handle a Cooper E80 loading, and in the foreground, a 70-foot uh, acro bridge on a state highway. This is in Rygate, New Hampshire. It was built to uh, put in a, a culvert that you see below that would handle a 100-year flood. So we do a wide variety of applications for the forest in industry in addition to nationwide work with interstates and local state roads. The next type of bridging I'd like to dis discuss is emergency application. This is one of the biggest challenges to owners when an emergency strikes. How can we quickly repair a structure that's been damaged or destroyed? Because of our modular system and our wide nationwide inventory, ACRO, ACRO is well suited to meet these challenges. Hurricane Irene, obviously, from the, anyone from the Northeast as well, this is a well-known uh, damaging hurricane. It made its way up the East Coast and parked above Eastern New York and Vermont. It dumped epic amounts of rain down and wiped out countless bridges and infrastructure. Here's a picture of a 130 foot acro bridge that was temporarily installed. Here's another picture before and after of a small town bridge 
the challenge to the owner and contractors alike with these pictures was accessibility because of this because the storm had caused such significant catastrophic damage and it, work couldn't commence until the waters receded and then the bridges were delivered and installed here's another before and after picture from the hurricane and a final picture this photo is of the Niobarara River, just south of the Missouri River. This small river funneled through the Spencer Dam in Spencer, Nebraska. In March of 2019, a large rainstorm and subsequent, subsequent snowmelt swelled the river, an ice jam blocked the spillway, and ultimately this led to a catastrophic failure, which resulted in an 11 foot tall wall of water that scoured the landscape that you see and wiped out bridges below. Within months, Acro supplied a 600 foot by 18 foot temporary bridge. This is a pretty cool story. Um, it shows an emergency temporary bridge that had been installed after a 7.0 magnitude earthquake on the island of Maui. The challenge to the owner was difficulty in accessing the location. This bridge was installed on the Hannah Highway. The road is filled with single lanes and sharp bends and plenty of, of switchbacks. The challenge, an additional, another challenge here was to install the bridge in an accelerated timeline. The bridge offered service to 700 residents. So the solution to provide an ACRO 700 access bridge in a span of 140 feet with a width of 13 foot seven wide and a design of H93 loading was decided. It was delivered in stick built and launched on site. A final project I'd like to highlight was the result of the Mount St. Helens eruption in May of 1980. This devastation left completely buried structures and roadways throughout the region. Some of the challenges faced uh, were due to accessibility, remoteness, uh, flooding conditions, and further, the bridges had to be constructed rapidly so as to salvage timber harvests that had been felled in the explosion. ACRO worked in partnership with the USFS and the Federal Highway Administration to provide a total of 18 bridges, all 13 foot, seven inches wide, ranging in spans from 140 feet up to 400 feet. Finally, I'd like to speak about our beam bridge applications. These beam bridges come in widths of six feet and they span either 25 feet, 35 or 45 feet. They come pre-assembled with a epoxy aggregate overlay typically, and they can accept a guardrail guardrail post to handle a wide range of guardrails. This is a bridge example in Connecticut. The challenge here to the owner was to find a cost-effective temporary solution to replace the failing bridge that you see below. The solution was a 45-foot beam bridge utilizing an overbridge application. As you can see here, the bridge spanned the existing structure, leaving the original bridge untouched. The beam bridge was reopened for a price that was roughly 50% less than the cost of replacing the entire bridge. Now the town decided they would leave this bridge in place, sort of um, deferring the replacement cost for a number of years, at which point they would remove this bridge, do a full bridge replacement, and utilize this bridge at another location where it was needed. This is a side view of the bridge in Eastern Connecticut. This fast track project was to replace a failing bridge that provided vehicular and snowmobile access through the Monroe State Forest in Massachusetts. The challenge here to the owner was to meet an aggressive construction timeline. The contractor had to have this bridge open, installed and open within a few months <clears throat> And it really had to be completed before the winter because of the snowmobile access. This 45 foot by 12 foot beam bridge was used. It arrived on once one truckload, was lifted off and installed in one day. <clears throat> this is a little different uh, application. Here's an example of a 35 foot by 18 foot beam bridge that utilized construction access in Connecticut. The challenge to the contractor in this case was the need for a temporary stream crossing without impacting the wetlands areas you can see below. 
The bridge was to be in service for several months. The solution was the short-term rental of this beam bridge. The bridge was shipped on one truck and was installed in a day. The bridge that came complete with a factory installed epoxy aggregate overlay. The contractor used his own crane mats for the bridge approaches and also used crane mats for his abutments. You can see the crane mats there in, in the picture. When the project was complete, the bridge was removed and the area was left to return to its original environment. And this is a picture of a permanent bridge, beam bridge. And I'm showing it just to give you a, a different idea of what these bridges can do. Here's a bridge in Stanford, Connecticut, 45 feet long, 18 feet wide, and handles up to the HL93 loading. You can see the fly fisher, fisherman in the foreground. And I heard Dr. Barker speaking earlier about uh, his fishing experiences. So he might like this photo. Um, but at any rate, I hope I provided insight as to the solutions Acro Bridges can offer to forestry engineers. And some of the key takeaways are our bridges are modular and prefabricated. There's no field welding, fabrication, or cutting required. They're easily assembled and disassembled. Our bridges are galvanized. It eliminates the need for corrosion. It eliminate, eliminates corrosion and sort of the need for maintenance. They're versatile. They're designed to handle the required loads, spans, and widths for the specific project. They're easily transported to the job site in difficult to service areas. The bridges are economical. We give the ability to choose between renting or purchasing the bridge, which makes ACRO an ideal solution, whether you have a long-term project or one lasting several months. The bridges are sustainable. They're lighter, longer, they're made of steel, which allows for a minimum minimal substructure. And we're experienced. Acro is a leader in the, and has a long history of providing temporary and permanent bridges throughout the world. And as you saw from some of these pictures, they're well suited for accelerated bridge construction with, well, utilizing local labor and minimal equipment on the job site. With that said, I hope to answer any questions after the presentation and my contact information and phone number, please feel to reach out to me if you have any further questions. Thank you.